When the Buddha taught breath meditation, he started out with four very simple steps. You discern long breathing, you discern short breathing. You try to breathe in and out, aware of the entire body. And then he introduced a technical term, fabrication. He says you try to breathe in and out, calming bodily fabrication. Now, there's another word for the in and out breath. The question is, why did he use that technical term? You see it again in the next four steps. You try to breathe in and out, sensitive to rapture, any sense of refreshment that you feel while you're sitting here. Try to focus on that. Let it spread throughout the body. Breathe in and out, sensitive to pleasure, sense of ease. Then he says to breathe in and out, sensitive to mental fabrication, which are feelings and perceptions. Now, you're already dealing with feelings. You're dealing with that feeling of ease. And then there's a step of breathing in and out, calming mental fabrication. It's obvious that the Buddha is trying to get you to think in terms of fabrication. In general, that means things that are put together, processes that put things together. But specifically, it means what you're doing to fabricate your own experience. Input comes into the senses, and you don't receive it with everything all identified as to what's important, what's not, and what's what. You have to do the identification. That's perception. You shape your experience. And we play a much bigger role in that shaping than we tend to think. And the Buddha wants you to get sensitive to that role. Simply the way you breathe is going to have an impact on how you experience the body. The feelings you focus on, the perceptions you use, those are going to have an impact on the mind. And then there's a third kind of fabrication called verbal fabrication, where you talk to yourself. Well, that's in the instructions of the meditation themselves, things you tell yourself. I'm going to breathe this way, I'm going to breathe that way. Focus on this, focus on that as I breathe in and out. And the Buddha wants you to calm that fabrication, partly gain a sense of how the way you fabricate things normally causes a lot of unnecessary stress and suffering. The more stirred up your fabrications, the more you're going to suffer. One, simply out of the effort to put these things together. And two, you come up with all kinds of ideas, perceptions, thoughts, feelings that can wreak a lot of havoc on the mind. When the mind is punishing itself this way, it's going to suffer. And the punishment doesn't stop there. It spreads out to other people. So follow the Buddha's instructions. Try to get sensitive to how the way you breathe has an impact on the body. And use the breath in a way that feels soothing, gives rise to feelings of pleasure, gives rise to feelings of refreshment. When the body's been energized, then you can allow it to grow calm. At the same time, look at the perceptions you're holding in mind right now. What kind of perception do you have of the breath? If you think of it simply as air coming in and out through the nostrils, it's going to be hard to use the breath to help spread those feelings of ease and well-being around the body. But if you think of the breath as a flow of energy, after all, the muscles have to move, the body has to move, so that the air can come in and out of the lungs. Well, what is that movement? Where does that come from? Where does it originate in the body? And as you feel that movement spreading through the body, does it feel good or does it feel like it's constricted? We're perfectly free to breathe any way we want. So why let yourself breathe in a way that's 
creating unnecessary stress. The usual reason is because we're not paying attention. We've got other things we think that are more important. But here again, the Buddha is pointing your attention to the, the way you breathe is going to have an impact on your mood. And the, your mood, of course, is going to have an impact on the things you do and say and think. So it's wise to get sensitive to this aspect of your experience, to see its potential. But also get more and more sensitive to how you really are shaping things. We focus on fabrication because we're looking ultimately for an unfabricated pleasure, something that you don't have to put together. And you don't really know the unfabricated until you've gotten very sensitive to how you fabricate things. You fabricate your experience at the present moment. It's not that everything is served to you ready-made, ready-finished. You have to put the things together, you have to put the finishing touches on them so that it becomes a coherent experience. The mind is active in its creation of the present moment. We don't create it t totally out of whole cloth. Some things do come in from our past actions. But when the Buddha explains the list of causes for suffering, input from the senses, which is what comes from your past actions, that comes after this process of fabrication. The way you fabricate your experience, if you do it in ignorance, you're already primed to suffer from that experience. If you fabricate with knowledge, it becomes a path. And the more sensitive you get as you fabricate a good path here, in other words, a good state of concentration, mindful, alert, you do it ardently. And you get a sense of ease that you can spread through the body. You get a sense of refreshment you can spread through the body. You spread your awareness through the body. Your sensitivity develops. It grows. Things that used to strike you as okay suddenly feel a little bit too stressful. You begin to notice more and more how you're shaping things. And how there's stress in the shaping. And you look at why. Why are you creating the stress? Well, there's desire. And as the Buddha said, not all desires are bad. Some desires, when you engage in them with knowledge, can be part of the path. But a lot of times our desires are ignorant. And they fuel our fabrication and Lots of ways that are conflicting, afflicting. And you begin to wonder, why get engaged? Why create these things? After all, you're not simply on the receiving end. You're creating these things and then you're suffering from them. And when you see that, that the suffering that comes from these things is not nearly worth the, the allure that makes you want to create them to begin with. Then you feel dispassion. Dispassion then causes these processes of fabrication to fall away, because it was the passion that was driving them. And then when they fall away, then something unfabricated can appear. It's always there, but we're too busy creating our fabrications what we want here, what we want there, what we think this is, what we think that is. If it's not what we want it to be, what can we do to make it what we want it to be, that kind of stuff. That's always getting in the way. But when you stop that process, then something outside of time appears in the mind. And that's the ultimate happiness. That's the unfabricated. I've known people who ask, how can we as conditioned beings find something unfabricated? But they're assuming that we're conditioned by something outside of our control. Either a creative God or just material laws. 
physical laws. But the Buddha's analysis is that, no, we're creating the present moment on our own initiative, using the raw materials, as I said, that come from the past, pointing the present moment in different directions. And because we're creating it, we can take it apart. Because we can take it apart, that's when we can find something that's not fabricated. This afternoon we talked about the image of happiness being like a roller coaster going up and down and up and down. And then thinking of nirvana as getting to the up and then not going down again. It's not it's actually just beyond the up. Wherever there's up, there's going to be down. The roller coaster is in space and time. The happiness of nirvana, the well being of nirvana, the bliss, all that's covered by one word in Pali happiness, bliss, well being, pleasure. The word is sukha. That's not dependent on anything in time. It's not dependent on anything fabricated, which is why it doesn't change. It's in a different dimension. But it can be contacted here at the mind when the mind stops its fabrication. So listen to the Buddha's instructions. He's pointing out to you. Even the way you breathe is fabricating your experience of the body. Your experience of the body is going to have an impact on feelings. Those feelings are going to have an impact on the mind. The way you talk to yourself, the perceptions you hold in mind as you identify this is this and that's that, what you want out of this and want out of that. Try to get sensitive to all those things and to see where they're placing unnecessary stress on the mind. The more you can get sensitive to the different levels of stress, the more you'll be able to unravel the process of fabrication. to that, that point of awakening, where the unfabricated appears. As the Buddha said, it's true happiness, harmless happiness, blameless happiness. One of those rare forms of happiness that really is more than worth the effort that goes into finding it. both for your well-being and the well-being of people around you.